Hello, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source, and I've got an exciting update in terms of the rainfall situation across eastern Australia. With the Madden Julian Oscillation now beginning to surge, we're expecting a significant uptick in rainfall, particularly through parts of Queensland, New South Wales, and drought-stricken Victoria and the southeastern corners of Australia. In the next couple of weeks, we are expecting this uptick to occur, and it's all in conjunction with the weakening off of the sudden stratospheric warming event. If these updates get you as excited as they get me, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it and tell me how it can improve in the comment section down below. But let's get stuck straight into things with a look at the rainfall outlook over the next two weeks. Centred over Queensland, but you can see generally speaking over a wide swathe of eastern and southeastern Australia as well, it is a much wetter picture. Not to mention, we also have a lot of rainfall now beginning to develop here offshore from Indonesia near the Kokos Keeling Islands, and some of that is even tropical related. Now, we are coming into the back end of October, so this is generally what we expect, and this is no different to what the long-range prediction was saying a few months ago with an uptick in rainfall at the end of October into the start of November. But the fact that it's really coming into fruition now, and after that massive scare with the sudden stratospheric warming event, particularly for Queensland, we thought that we would lose completely all of the spring rainfall and thunderstorm activity. Now, not looking like that's going to be the case, and not to mention the rainfall coming through for southeastern Australia, which is going to give much-needed reprieve to the drought conditions that we're seeing down there. This is very good news indeed. Now, one of the major drivers that's causing this massive uptick in rainfall, you can see a lot of rain between that 25 to 50 millimeter mark through parts of the NT and then up to 150 millimeters through parts of Queensland is a major driver called the MJO, the Madden Julian Oscillation. It's one of our major tropical influences and you can think of it as a massive surge of energy that rotates anti-clockwise around the world uh, on about a 40 to 50 day basis. And it's what gives us our three pronounced monsoonal bursts that we see at different times during our wet season. The MJO becomes a major player in Australia's wet season activity uh, by around early November and that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Section number three, which is down here on this graph, is the northwest of WA and you can see that the MJO is currently located. The increased amount of cloud, uh, clouds and rainfall is located into section three and that's what's promoting the development of a tropical low now offshore from the Cocos Keeling Islands. By the 24th of October, this will turn into a section four uh, situation which is towards the Timor Sea offshore from the Tiwi Islands or the Northern Territory, and then it dips a little bit back towards uh, the Northern Hemisphere into the Western Pacific into the start of November and then bounces back offshore from Queensland by early to mid-November around the 10th of November which should produce another surge of rainfall into the Coral Sea and potentially a significant rainfall event through parts of far Northern Queensland and you can see a lot of the ensemble members the median for the ensemble members does take it through the Australian region but you can see a few of these ensembles taking it very close to the Australian region which could promote activity uh, in terms of tropical activity into the Coral Sea as we get out towards mid-November so again it's something to be watching very closely. Not to mention that we've also got a cool neutral slash almost La Nina now beginning to develop in the Nino 3.4 index and that is also going to continue to drive rainfall up especially through eastern Australia because a cool neutral promotes warmer than average sea temperatures offshore from Queensland and through the East Australian current which is currently on the boil. Some spots offshore from the Illawarra coast of New South Wales at three degrees Celsius above average and all of this is tying very nicely back into above average rainfall through eastern Australia. But it's not just over the next two weeks, you can see significant rainfall is expected through parts of southeast Queensland. That's going to begin next week with a bit of a rainfall event that is now on the forecast forecast to develop from the 27th of October onwards from the Queensland coastline, which could turn into a low pressure system at some point around the 30th or the 31st of October. This will then slide down into the Tasman Sea, making the most of warm sea temperatures down there. And not to mention, all of this moisture coming in from the Coral Sea is going to promote multiple severe thunderstorm outbreaks in the next two weeks across Queensland. One likely coming this Thursday or tomorrow when you see this forecast update on the 23rd of October and then one again on the weekend on the 26th of October on Sunday and then more severe thunderstorms into the last couple of days of October and the first couple of days of November also expected and that's what we see when above average sea temperatures are lying out into the Coral Sea uh, and you can actually see them on this map here, sea temperatures. Uh, whilst they aren't significantly above average, 26 pushing 27 degrees around the coastal areas, they're now warm enough to sustain tropical cyclones, which normally kicks in at around November 1st, this year about two weeks earlier than average. And that's very much in line with that general warming trend that we've seen over the last couple of uh, months through parts of northern Australia and also down into the East Australian current offshore from New South Wales, where sea temperatures are now beginning to get on the boil down there. And that's going to drive up rainfall for the east parts of Victoria and also for New South Wales as well. So again, overall, a very exciting picture. But looking at just the next couple of weeks is not very helpful to us. We need to understand when this rainfall is really going to begin to build up across Queensland. And for that, I use this model here, the CFS Weekly, which is a look at rainfall anomalies over 
over the period of weeks. So this is uh, a six week model and it goes out to the end of November, start of December on this forecast run. And we're beginning to see signals of increased rainfall, particularly in towards the back end of November and also in towards the start of December, especially across Queensland. So this is for the week that's occurring right now. As we know, there's a big cloud band extending across Eastern Australia and that's making its way through Victoria as we speak. That rainfall is going to jump up those rainfall numbers. And you can see through South Australia, Victoria above average rainfall accumulations are expected through this week. And this big blue to purple splotch over here, which is very much above average rainfall, is driven by a tropical low that's developing offshore from the Cocos Keeling Islands, which you can actually see here on this satellite imagery. A strong tropical low is beginning to get itself going. It looks really healthy, but again, well offshore from Western Australia, and of course, no threat to the West Australian coastline, and a very minimal threat in terms of some potentially strong wind gusts and isolated periods of heavy rainfall around the Cocos Keeling Islands. But I digress. Pushing this forward, you can see through the first, uh, the, uh, the, the second week rather, and this is the last week of October into the first week of November, that rainfall really does jump up through parts of southeastern Queensland, particularly around the Capricorna and Fraser coastlines, and we see a general above average rainfall picture through the top end of the Northern Territory, and also through parts of Central uh, South Australia and also the Northern Territory too, and generally above average rainfall from some thunderstorms through the eastern half of New South Wales. Pushing this forward even further, it becomes very much a coral sea picture as this Madden Julian oscillation begins to surge into, like I said, around the 10th of November through parts of the Coral Sea. Above average moisture expected well out to sea into the Coral Sea, and that will likely drive increased shower activity around the 10th of November, give or take five or ten days around there for parts of northern Queensland and also for the wet Sundays and down towards the Capricorn coastline. And then you can see that general wet picture does continue throughout the middle parts of October. This is between the 10th to the 17th of November. We see that rain increase once again through parts of southeastern Queensland and for the last couple of weeks of November we are expecting substantially above average rainfall through not only southeastern Queensland but also for central and parts of northern Queensland as that Madden Julian oscillation comes back around to section 3 which will happen into the first week of December and likely to result in our first significant bump in tropical low slash tropical cyclone chances offshore from Western Australia it will also drive rainfall through parts of central Australia as well. So the rainfall is most certainly on the cards it's on its way it's just a few weeks away now. As that sudden stratospheric warming event has begun to ease off, we've seen this southern annular mode, which is the sand phase, jump strongly towards the negative, which favours rainfall for parts of southeastern Australia. And that's why we've seen such a significant cold front move through, which you can actually see on this map right now, promoting severe thunderstorm activity as well through parts of South Australia. And it's funny how everything is kind of flipped on a dime. We've gone from that dry driver being that SSW event and the very positive southern annular mode, which was keeping things very dry across southeastern Australia, to a very significant wet driver now as that SSW weakens. We see this cool neutral phase kick in, the Madden Julian oscillation beginning to surge and that coinciding with a negative Indian Ocean dipole as well. It's all coming together for what looks to be a very wet couple of weeks ahead for Australia, particularly over east. Now, of course, there will be places that are drier than average, and we're talking about tropical rainfall here, which means it's very unpredictable, and especially when we start taking thunderstorm forecasts into account, which is particularly what we're expecting through New South Wales, there will be some places that cop it and some places that miss out completely. So take it with a grain of salt, and make sure you watch the radar and watch the forecast as it begins to evolve onto the uh, shorter range as well. This is a, a significant time. We're now very much into this changeover period between the drier months of the cool season and the wetter months of the warm season and the big wet up in northern Australia and particularly for Queensland a very exciting time as this build up moisture now begins to translate to actual moisture falling across a wide swathe of Queensland and again very exciting to see this rainfall now begin to make itself apparent on the forecast. You can see over the next 14 days some healthy rainfall accumulations that are supported by other major forecast models as well. Not just one forecast is suggesting this, we have multiple major forecast models now on board with this rainfall which means a high level of certainty is now in for this rainfall event coming into the backside of October. Very exciting stuff indeed when we have these high certainty events with a lot of forecast models involved it makes it very easy to make predictions and again just looking at that long range prediction above average rainfall expected throughout the month of November and if we take a look at the CFS monthly which is another reliable forecast model you can see that rainfall prediction is expected to be much above average through wide swathes of coastal eastern Queensland and southeastern Queensland uh, through the month of November. December remains wet as well. It looks like it's going to be offshore from Western Australia's time to shine in December, but also some significant low pressure events possible into the Tasman Sea. And as mentioned with those sea temperatures on the boil into the Tasman Sea now up around 22, 23 degrees Celsius, and they'll only get warmer as temperatures continue to rise adjacent to the Australian coastline. We will see this rainfall forecast jump up even more through the uh, Illawarra coastline and the Gippsland coastline of Victoria, of New South Wales and Victoria respectively. Uh, exciting times for them as they have been very dry late. 
lately. And as mentioned in previous updates, February expected to be a big month for rainfall, particularly for Queensland. It normally is for Queensland, but in terms of compared to the average, another very much above average month is expected in the month of February. We're likely to have the Madden Julian Oscillation situated in section five, which keeps it into the Coral Sea, and that will pump moisture ashore for at least a two week period through northern Queensland, and will likely develop uh, at least one tropical cyclone, but also multiple tropical lows. A very typical February pattern uh, that we see most wet seasons a big surge in the monsoon around February or early March, and it's going to be no different this year, Expecting, except again, it is expected to be wetter than average. And that's important to understand when looking at these graphs and these forecast models, is we're comparing this to the long-term average. Of course, February is going to be wet, and of course, we're going to see a very heavy rainfall across a wide section of northern Australia. And even the Kimberley region is going to see heavy rainfall in uh, the month of February. It's just going to be slightly lighter than average. There's going to be less rainfall than average, and it's going to be more concentrated than average. Uh, and that is the important fact to understand when we're looking at these sort of maps is that this is compared to the long-term average. March is where things do start to begin to fall apart. We are expecting the El Nino to develop in the middle parts of 2026, and that means rainfall is really going to pull away quite quickly into the last couple of months of the wet season. Things will still be wet, especially over west, because of that negative Indian Ocean dipole. That's not going anywhere anytime soon, but we are expecting this El Nino event to kick in through the middle parts of 2026, and that's going to keep things a lot drier and a lot higher as well with those higher pressure systems across central Australia and 2026 looking to be another dry year or a potentially dry year across parts of northern Australia as well. Not the news that we were looking at this rainfall run that we've been having whilst it has been devastating to some, for many it has been absolutely amazing and it, it will be sad to see this rainfall go. Anyways, I do hope you've enjoyed this quick update on the situation of rainfall around Australia. It's a very interesting one and as you can hear I'm very excited to be able to report on this massive change in seasons that's now beginning to get itself going. It is exciting times that's for sure and if this is your cup of tea then please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it. The support is massively appreciated and to have you on board as well would be amazing as well. If you haven't already, then click the join button too. There's a massive thank you to the channel sponsors and Facebook supporters. Their names are also on screen right now. Without them, I could not keep the lights on here and their support is, as always, massively appreciated as well. But that's going to be all for me today, this afternoon, whenever you're watching this video and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.